Hey, it's time for math class. Manufacturing math, how stuff gets made, lesson one, in which we begin to build an arc. We've been wrestling for the last couple of videos with this sort of dilemma about how to cut a circle using machines that are constrained to move in what are essentially squares. So we want to cut around the circumference of a three inch diameter circle using a 1 8 inch drill bit in an old school drill press that, as we know, is constrained to move, our, our imaginary shot machine is constrained to move only along the X or the Y axis. And this is just review. All of the virtual machines that we've seen so far will move fundamentally only two directions, along X, left to right, or along Y, front to back. And no matter how big or how sophisticated or how fancy the machine, we've established that it's constrained to move and to cut only along the X or the Y and, of course, the Z axis. So our dilemma, the dilemma we've been wrestling with for the last couple of videos, is how do we use a machine that only moves in a square to create a circle? And we are finally ready. You're probably crazy listening to me repeat this question over and over again, but it's very important. And now we're ready for the answer. We build an arc. We build a path for our radial arm to travel around the circumference, the outside of the circle, and create the hole that our job spec calls for. Now, it's going to take some measurement on our part, but it's really pretty easy to get started. We know the length of our radial arm, right? We, we're dealing with a one and a half inch radius based on our three inch diameter circle. It's the, so the radius is half the diameter. So we know exactly where to drill the first hole, an inch and a half from home. Okay, now let's wait just a second and go back and review this idea of home. Remember back on our checkerboard, on our original checkerboard from the first time we looked at this, we set an arbitrary home at 0.0, .0 down on the baseline of the checkerboard, and we called it home. But the important thing to remember is we can move that home anywhere on our material. Any place our machine is set to zero, zero becomes home. As long as X equals zero, Y equals zero, it's considered home. So we can arbitrarily move that around the material anywhere we need to based on our job specification. Home is a target that can move around based on where we need the machine to begin at zero, zero. Yes, it's a little bit confusing at first but it will make sense in just a minute. Home moves along with our design specification. Home is home because we call it home. So what was originally home, it was home because we said so, if that makes sense. So when our design specifications calls for a circle three inches in diameter, measured from the bottom and the left borders of our material, our imaginary material checkerboard, our center point on that circle established our radial arm, you'll remember, our radius, at a point that is an inch and a half away from both borders, the precise point that is an inch and a half from both the front and the left border. And for machine purposes, when we did that, we reset home. Home is now the center point on our circle, and the center point is now considered zero, zero. We can move zero, zero around as much as we want to. Okay, so far so good. This idea of a floating home or a floating zero zero, the idea that the geometry serves and that the geometry is not arbitrary but rather moves around to suit our, suit our needs is very, very important. Because the next thing we need to understand is that when we do this, when we reset home, the x and y axes are reset along with it. So where we had perhaps arbitrarily had X and Y axes running along the edge of the material, they are now reset so that they converge at point zero zero, which is, of course, also the center point of our circle. They now run through the new home, and in the process, they become the new X equals zero, Y equals zero, and they reestablish the X and Y axes on our diagram. Everything on our arc now measures from zero, zero. 
so that when we run our radial arm around the circumference of the circle to create the hole, the origin point, the center point, is 0, 0 in our new manufacturing geometry. Does that make sense? It's, it's really important. We need to remember that our machine runs on points plotted on the x and y axes and every point we drill from now on will be plotted from this new home and so all this plotting and moving around reorients us so we can begin creating the basis for an arc and in this case the basis for the arc is very simple we're going to stay at y zero and we know that we can move an inch and a half directly on the x-axis and drop a hole and it, re and it remains consistent as long as our units are measured, of course, in inches. So now we've switched from the arbitrary checkerboard to actually measuring in inches, and that's fine. That's great progress for us. Okay, if you've grasped what we've done so far, establishing the arc, reorienting, homing, the machine to the new home based on our design specifications. This is really important stuff for manufacturing mathematics and it's also really important stuff for running shop machines. You're doing great. We're, we're, we're exactly on track. Now what we need to know is where are we going to put the second point? And that becomes a very interesting question. Okay, we're going to take a little break. We're going to give you a little bit of a break and we're going to break this lecture into a couple of parts. So, so take a deep breath. Uh, go get yourself a cool, refreshing beverage and get ready to click on the second segment of this lecture, okay?